David Burroughs is here from Barometer and Dosange is in Surrey, BC. Good morning, Dosange. Oh, good morning. Uh, but are your guests view on H&R Realty Trust? All right, HR. Okay. So, Dosange, a little while ago on the show, we talked about the REITs and the fact that over the course of this year, predominantly through the early part of last winter, we had to scale back our weightings quite dramatically in the REITs because really they were selling off along with the sell-off and the long end of the bond market. Really when you're buying the REITs, while they do have distribution growth, many of them 5-6% a year, uh, they are going to trade with interest rates. So uh, through July, August and September, they have really consolidated and found a base. Uh, we believe that the move higher in rates as it hit 3% got to the top end of the range. We have still a low weighting in REITs, about 6% in our income portfolios. We have tried to focus on slightly more economically sensitive REITs, like the industrial REITs, uh, which I think are behaving a little bit better. Uh, but probably from a risk-reward standpoint at this point, they're not a bad entry point. I noticed the short positions have been cut in half over the course of the last month on it. Do you, does that suggest to you that maybe we've hit a bottom in the REIT space? Yeah, and I, th I really think you're making a call on interest rates here, but when we look at it, there really is no inflation. Job growth is not accelerating. Credit risk does not look substantial in the, in the, in the bond market. And the last thing is GDP growth really is not likely to run away here. So the move from one and a half to three probably is about it in the near term. Uh, and the REITs probably start to look a little more attractive. We still have a relatively small weight because there's other sectors doing better, but these will be okay. We're going to go from uh, Surrey now to Vancouver. Hi, Jerry. Good afternoon from Vancouver, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, David, I'm always looking for a little dividend income and some growth. So I've recently purchased some uh, BCE and Rogers. Now I'm considering Rio Can. But on a strong up day, the stock is down. So that really worries me. Right. I'd, I'd appreciate your input on uh, RealCan. And, uh, well, you already told me about the interest rate. So what do you think about RealCan? Thanks a lot. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. So, Jerry, what, what we're battling here is flows of capital. And I think we spent a lot of time trying to figure out where money is coming from and going to. And we know that, in general, money has been coming away from sectors that are more driven by interest rates and moving towards things with maybe lower dividend payouts but more scope for dividend increase. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the dividend payout on the S&P 500 is about 33% of earnings, which actually, relative to history, is very low. You know, on average, over the last 80 years, it's been about 50%. The REITs, of course, pay a very high percentage of their earnings out. So we see money rotating from, sec from companies and sectors that have very high payouts to sectors with lower payouts but where they're growing. So I don't think you're going to get hurt in the REITs, but you may likely underperform should equity markets you know, be firm through the rest of the year. Uh, so we would prefer to look at, at some other sectors with lower dividend payouts, but I think you'll be, you're not going to get hurt in a real can. All right, let's change gears here. Jerry, thanks for that. Last word goes to John in Brampton, Ontario. Hi, John. Yeah, how are you doing, Mike and Dave? Good, thank you. Uh, Great, thanks. thanks for taking my call. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd like to know a little bit about uh, Hewlett Packard. It's um, over a, a, a 20 or 30 years. It's had a long growth, but recently it's gone into had some problems. Um, is it time to buy it now? And uh, Meg Whitman seemed to think that it's going to. Uh, she's going to be having everything straightened out next two years. For um, I guess my call would be a one or two year buy. Right. She said she'd bring it back to a leadership position by 2016. Well, John. Um the buyer who's going to buy this stock is a value investor, one that feels they're buying discounted assets at a discounted price uh, and that the market will figure it out as things get better. Uh, we are not value investors. We don't believe we're smarter than the market, so we like to see some evidence that the market is changing its view. This is a company that's gone through lots of difficulty. It's, it has some, some low margin businesses. Uh, and their foray into telecommunications equipment has not been overly successful. Mm -hmm. So um, this is not one that I would buy. I would wait to see a real turn in the numbers before I put my money at risk in this one. There's other sector, other companies within the tech space that I think are attractive in lots of different areas. Uh, I'd be more inclined right now, for instance, to buy semiconductors. Um, and there are some specific areas of semiconductors that look attractive, but this is one I think that you're, you're you, hoping for a turnaround. Who do you like in semis? Uh, well, in the near term, for instance, I like Micron. Mm -hmm. uh, Micron is, is very dependent on, on economic cycle, um, and the pricing has been firming up for DRAM chips. They're going to report their earnings very shortly, mm -hmm. and uh, I think there's a real good chance that they're going to beat estimates. 
uh, this one is working in this market. When you're in a decent market, buy what's working. Don't buy what's not working, hoping it's going to tur get turned around. Because if you get into a tougher market, the underperforming stuff in an up market tends to underperform more in a down market. Quarterly results are due out on the 10th, John. We're expecting Q4 revenue to climb 38% to $2.7 billion. Street consensus, though, at $0.25 cents for the bottom line. Uh, that uh, would be up 203% from the loss of $0.24 cents this time last year. Time now for the Market Call Minute. Dave in Toronto, Acon Group, is it a buy, sell, or a hold? The stock's doing remarkably well. They've got good growth in the business. The sector is, is doing very well. I'd buy the stock. Do you own it? We do not own it. Do you own TransCanada for Bill and Sarnia? We don't own TransCanada Pipe currently. Uh, we like the company, but there's better companies in the mid mid. Um, uh, um, Midstream? the, the midstreamers. Uh, so we like companies like IPL and Kiera better. For Irvin uh, in uh, Sarnia, major drilling, is it a buy, sell, or a hold? Major drilling, we don't own the stock currently. We would prefer to own the companies in the equipment space, su supporting oil and gas, not necessarily the drillers. For Bill in Winnipeg, Cameco, is it a glowing buy? I think that Cameco is a stock I'd be more likely to short than to buy. Uh, I think uranium does not look attractive. For Frank in Toronto, H and R Block. H&R Block, uneven revenues and earnings. The time to own H&R Block is into the spring, not in the fall. The seasonal tax period is the time you want to be a shareholder. What about the Iron Horses? Fred at Edmonton wanted your opinion on CSX. We like the rails. We own uh, United, uh, United Pacific, UNP. Uh, we have owned uh, CNR. I like CP. Uh, I think you can own this whole group. Uh, there's a real secular tailwind here. Uh, petroleum products being shipped by rail, north-south trade between Canada, the U.S. and Mexico looks very attractive. Thank you for your calls. Your emails and the tweets, too. We're taking a short break. When we come back, it's the top picks.